Hey, happy bloody November, fellow Spurtons. November, already. It seems like only yesterday I was shooting the very first Techspert Weekly of 2023. Look at how young and fresh-faced that twat is. A fun wee behind the scenes fact, that might look like a smile but it in fact is a grimace because I was suffering from some truly diabolical post New Year's booze and breath. I mean honestly my mouth felt like I'd just jumped face first into the England rugby team's dirty washing bin and systematically cleaned every last jockstrap with my tongue. And then I blinked and then it's November apparently and I've still got rancid breath. Seriously I've even tried goggling with toilet duck. But anyway, in last week's Think to Punish an episode, we had a proper dribble over the upcoming Xiaomi 14 series. The very first smartphones to launch with Qualcomm's shiny new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 stuffed into their guts. But while Xiaomi was very fast off the mark there, plenty of other manufacturers have softly launched their own flagship smartphones, or at the very least given a little tease, and they should be with us in the coming months. One such manufacturer is one of Xiaomi's big Chinese rivals, Honor, who has been really busy scrubbing their best launch pants ready to unveil the fresh new Magic 6 series. The Magic 5 phones went global back in April this year, and I rather liked that Pro model, even if it was so big that even Godzilla would struggle to squeeze it into his baggiest jeans. While the Magic 5 Lite was a much cheaper option for skint folk, with appropriately diminished specs. Well, you can once again expect the Magic 6 series to come in both Pro and Lite flavours, although only the Pro will get that tasty bit of Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 action. But what do we actually know about the Pro so far, eh? Well, let's have us a high quality premium jingle and find out. Techspert Weekly! So even though that new Snapdragon brain promises some rather intriguing fresh features, the rest of the Magic 6 Pro shouldn't be a massive evolution over the old Honor 5 Pro especially as that phone is still well under a year old. You can of course expect another almighty handset that comes close to hitting 7 inches, with a slightly curved and super bright OLED LTPO screen. The Honor Magic 5 Pro did have a dual lens selfie cam and that stretched out orifice always blocked a wee bit of your view when you were enjoying some highbrow entertainment or murdering pretend things in your favourite game. And sadly here on the Magic 6 Pro this dual cam is once again back, but now shifted into a more central position. Gotta say it is a bit of an eyesore and I certainly preferred it when it was shunted away into one corner like an unruly child, although it still doesn't look quite as bad as Apple's floating turd. If the iPhone's dynamic island is a beefy Labrador bum egg, well the Honor Magic 6 Pros is more like a bit of chihuahua scat. Anyway, performance! And with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 powering the Magic 6 Pro, that performance should be absolutely bloody great. And here's hoping it's just as energy efficient as promised, so the battery life is just as lovely. And Honor has already showed off some of the smarty pants new features coming to the Magic 6 Pro courtesy of that Qualcomm chipset, including some eye tracking shenanigans called Magic Capsule. When a notification pops up at the top of the display, just aim your eyeballs at it to expand it into a bigger window with a bit more detail. And if you keep on staring like an absolute serial killer who refuses to break eye contact in a public hot tub, then the actual app will pop up onto the screen, all without any fingering whatsoever. Your mum would certainly be most disappointed. And this feature might sound a bit like a gimmick, like a bit of a headline grabber, but if this smartphone is as ruddy massive as it most likely will be, it should really help out with that one-handed use. And Honor is also making full use of that clever bollocks Snapdragon seamless tech that you'll find stuffed inside of the 8 Gen 3. So your Honor laptop, tablet, smartphone etc can all basically be used collectively as a sort of a singular hive mind device. For example with one click you can use your phone's camera as a webcam for your PC or you can instantly have your photos and videos beamed across to your laptop for editing. And you can also easily drag an app or a mobile game from your phone onto your PC to play it on a bigger screen and share your peripherals between multiple shiny gadgets. And Honor has promised that this is all super stable and incredibly power efficient and will absolutely 100% blow your bollocks off. Or if you are bereft of bollocks then some other suitably fleshy body part. That's more or less exactly what they said word for word. I just hope that Magic OS has been given much more than just a quick spit and polish because it generally lets the hardware down a bit. And while so far there's been bugger all leaks about the camera tech, well I wouldn't really want Honor to muck about with it too much because what we got on the previous Magic Pro was dead good bruv. 
So that right there, my lovelies, in a tasty wee nutshell, is all we know so far about the Honor Magic 6 series. But what kind of new features would you like to see crammed inside of that massive bloody frame? Well, it would be absolutely effing marvellous if you could let us know down in the comments below. And speaking of which, it's now time for that part of the show that loosens more bowels than a pint of laxido. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Let just have a quick sip of my gin. Oh. Right, so we're starting this week with the Master 711, who says, if we are the spurt in army, are you General Spurt or Commander Spurt? Well, I used to be a massive fan of Commander Keen back in the day. Absolutely banging platformer. Definitely seek it out on some emulator thing if you haven't given it a go. So I would definitely be Commander Spurt of the two, but just call me uncle. Uh, Gotham says, Chris, have you sacked your daughter from the This Is About Next Week jingle? And no, not at all. I've just had a surprising number of requests for the old next week, next week, what the f*** is next week jingle, which to be fair, I'm not even sure really counts as a jingle. But I'm absolutely not going to sack her, that's for sure, mostly because she works for Haribo. In fact, I'm kind of hoping that in a few years' time she'll be running this channel while I'm just off in a corner somewhere getting absolutely smashed. Uh, on the same subject as well, Will Rivera says, I much prefer the old, this is about next week. Does that mean the old one that I've now gone back to or the one with my daughter singing it? I'm so, so confused right now. <laughs> Maybe I should just back to back both of them every time and then everyone will be happy or no one, which is much more likely. Rick Gillian says, not sure I'm likely to hear the phrase Bukaki Onslaught on MKBHD or Unbox Therapy. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a reason they have many millions more subscribers compared with me. The Steezyfied Creation says, he doesn't like James Corden. Most astute observation, sir. A star. And More Bags says, yes, back to the Corden hatred. I like it. I mean, it never went away, mate. I mean, to be honest, I would happily drop an anvil on James Corden's oddly spherical head if I thought I could get away with it. It's not really murder, it's just an abortion that came 45 years too late. Baz Anime says, Uncle Spurt, any bed bugs down your end? Now that's a good reason for macro lenses. Bed bugs down my end sounds a bit painful. Makes it sound like they're actually crawling into my knob. Oh, it's about two months worth of nightmare juice just there. And John Paul Graham says, just bought the Xiaomi 13 about two or maybe three months back. Bollocks. And that is most unfortunate, mate, but that is also the joy of tech. Not only is most of it hideously overpriced, but also it's basically out of date as soon as you rip off the cellophane. Uh, Bitchovsky, great name, says, Been using the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 since launch, and I finally decided in Feb that I would go for the Pixel 8 Pro. Oh, but apparently no such luck because it's not available in Dubai where Bidjovsky happens to live. Not so great, is it? It's not all it's bloody cracked up to be then. Not only do they get all stressy if you wonder about the place getting boozed up, but also they don't even stock the latest Google flagships. A bag of overpriced arse. Uh, Bidjovsky continues, As my main focus is the camera, the next contender was the S24, but bloody hell, it's three or four months away, and now I hear it might not even carry the Gen 3. Yes, that is a point of some considerable consternation. It might have the 8 Gen 3, but yeah. Uh... So now here we are with the Xiaomi 14 Pro about a month or two away, and it does the same AI magic that the Pixel 8 Pro was going to be unique for. Yeah, it certainly does look like that 8 Gen 3 can do some very smarty pants image process and just hope that manufacturers actually make the most of it. Uh, next up, Forgotten Paper Flowers says the S24 Ultra is apparently using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but the base models and the S24 Plus will use the Exynos in Europe. I mean, uh, that would be considerably toss if it's true, because the Galaxy S24 is going to be one of very few compact smartphones that gets launched in 2024. You can basically hopefully count on a Zenfone 11, Google Pixel 9, I guess, and kind of the Xiaomi 14, although that's still 6.36 inches. Another bad year to have miniature wee goblin hands. Anyway, Chris in Taiwan says, Can't wait to never hear about ray tracing on mobile again. But Chris, mate, realistic lighting effects. It makes a world of difference on a dinky smartphone screen for the four games that actually support it. I mean, I grew up with the likes of Manic Miner and Odd Job Eddie, so frankly, any game these days looks pretty bloody good to my knackered old eyes. Next up, R. Thompson says, Watch what the monthly contract payments will be on the main carriers. Even the old Xiaomi phones are touching 45 quid a month. Ruddy ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, well, brace yourself for a me isn't everything really stupidly expensive these days rant. 
We got forced onto a new electricity tariff just a month or two ago, and the first bill they sent through, I thought they'd accidentally done the tariff in f***ing rupees or something. So there's a good chance that in all future videos I do, that big f*** off teddy right there will be switched off, as will that massive light right there. I'll basically just be sat here in the dark, my face vaguely illuminated by my smartphone screen. Uh, Fangji says, do you think there will be a Xiaomi 14T releasing soon? I mean, I bloody hope not, mate. Too many friggin' phone launches makes uncle's spurt stabby stabby. But definitely expect a Xiaomi 14 Ultra smartphone to be launched over in China, maybe in about sort of two or three months time, possibly early New Year. And then the Xiaomi 14 Ts will follow, you know, a few months after that. And then of course the global launches will happen a couple of months later. So hopefully by sort of January time, we'll have the Xiaomi 14 on British soil. Daniel Williams says, hoping the OnePlus 12 is announced sooner rather than later. Looking forward to seeing what that has to offer. Yeah, definitely me too. Yeah, I really enjoyed the OnePlus 11. Thought there was OnePlus bang back on form. So hopefully they can keep up the trend with the OnePlus 12, make it a solid all-rounder at a good price. Playboy says, hey Techspert, real question here. Is 144Hz or 165Hz still a gimmick or what? Motorola has had 144Hz phones, so why are the main flagships still coming out with 120Hz? Well, I wouldn't say that those high refreshes, the 144Hz, etc., are gimmicks, but I would say that I reckon only like a proper hardcore esports player would notice the difference between a 120Hz display and a 144 or 165Hz. I stare at smartphone screens all bloody day, and while I can notice the difference between, say, 60 hertz and 90 hertz, anything over 90 hertz, it kind of all sort of looks super slick to me. Plus, so few games actually support a refresh rate over 120 hertz that I wouldn't even bother worrying about it anyway. Uh, John Whitehead says, Nick Nolte and Gary Busey are pretty much interchangeable, with Nolte being the slightly less drunk and deranged of the two. Not entirely sure that's really saying much, to be honest. And Zippy Finley Adventures says, No one here under 35 knows who Nick Nolte or Gary Busey are. Damn, we got old, mate. Uh, I mean, I was just shocked when I looked these guys up that not just one of them, but both of them are actually somehow still alive. They must have somehow magically just sucked down the right ratio of booze to drugs to keep their system in perfect balance. Uh, Jonathan Lewis says, Hey, I'm posting from a Pixel 2 that I bought new and is still my daily driver. So they go, that's pretty much the seven years that the new Pixel 8 are supposed to last year. So I do wonder in six years' time if people will still be posting to this show from the Pixel 8. Of course, that would require me to not be booted off YouTube for the foreseeable future, which seems kind of unlikely. And he does actually continue, Do you trust the Goog to deliver on seven years of support with the Pixel 8 phones? I mean, yeah, I don't think they were lying about it, although perhaps they were counting on the entire world just crumbling into a molten slag heap in the intervening time. And Mr. Elliot says, how is the One Piece manga going for you? I hope you haven't dropped it. Well, not technically. I kind of swapped from it to the Netflix show, which I thought was actually really bloody good. And then I kind of got lost in where I was up to in the manga if I was going to just like continue it on from the series. And being a lazy git, I didn't do what would inevitably be a simple 10 second Google to find out which issue to sort of kick it up from. So I've just been going back and reading some more Chainsaw Man and Spy X Family, which are just f***ing awesome. Uh, Rora Jab says, what are the benefits for us to hear bad words during videos? Just do clean videos and your channel will be great. Rora Jab, me old mucker, I think we both know all too well that that's never gonna f***ing happen. And yeah, sure, there's no actual tangible benefits to me cursing up a storm here on YouTube, perhaps. It sure makes me feel a lot f***ing better. So f*** me f***ing up the f***ing hole. And anyway, on that incredibly mature and 100% tech-related, as always, bombshell, it's time for me to make like a tree and f*** right off. So a massive, massive, huge, enormous thanks to everyone who left comments last week. Please do smash your comments down below. And as always, we will try and wend our merry way through that valley of delights next week. And speaking of next week. Next week, next week. What the f*** is next week? This is about next week. Well, next week, I'm hoping to bring you a sexy slew of tech-related treats. There's no actual launches going on, but I've still got that pile of shame right there to work my way through. So if you don't want to miss all that hot action, God forbid, please do pork subscribe and ding that notifications bell. And I'm going to go off and edit this heap of bollocks and then bugger off to my daughter's school fireworks party. Where they do have an alcohol stand, but they also charge about five quid for a warm tin of Fosters. Hence I've sawn about a dozen hip flasks into the lining of my jacket. 
suck on that one, PTA. So hopefully see you all next week. Have a really fantastic weekend. Love you.